Do, do, All right, do, first do, up, do, 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 NeoPixels. Do. Okay, these are NeoPixels, but they're little NeoPixels. So we have these new 35, 35 LED NeoPixels. That means they're 3.5 millimeter by 3.5 millimeter rather than a five by five, which means they are half the size. Um, if you multiply it out, it's exactly half the um, surface area of the large NeoPixel, which you see on the left. So, so on, the, on the left, that's the standard. And then this is the mini. And then on the overhead, I actually have a little um, shield that I built with this. I'll show that project later. So this is, oh, hold on, let me uh, turn this off to start. So you can see that these are um, much smaller, so you can fit almost twice as many. Um, so before I had a three by six matrix, and so now I can have a four by eight. And um, this is them at one-fifth brightness, and they're still um, very, very bright. They're the same brightness as normal NeoPixels. They're just smaller. And um, right now, we're just selling them as individual um, uh, LEDs. You get a strip of 10. You can solder them by hand. Uh, they seem to be more durable than uh, normal NeoPixels, so you can solder them a little bit better um, by hand. And um, yeah, I, just, I did this on, in the reflow oven. It was pretty easy, and it just lets you pack more pixels. Okay. And we have them in... Uh, a white plastic and also kind of a black plastic. So if, yeah. you, if you have a black PCB, um, get these. I mean, you still have the white circle, but it just gives you a little bit more um, uh, no, it's cool. contrast. Look, anytime you can add more black to something is better. Yeah. We all agree. Yep. But yeah, basically, it's completely compatible with the NeoPixel. And here, you can even see the chip is the same, pretty much. Yeah. Um, you have the three dots. It just doesn't have the full plastic body. Okay. Next up. Cable, cable. Good these looking. are cool, though. I know. These are totally cool and weird. And when I, I saw them, I was like, oh my god, I got to have these. So these I like are. Our, I like our little cable collection. Right. Yeah, these are funny. So these are cables, and um, they're USB cables. So like you plug them into a USB port or a computer or um, one of those like USB battery packs that you get that like charges your phone. And it gives you 9 or 12 volts out. It has a little boost converter in the center. And it can actually give you like up to 700 milliamps out, and the efficiency is about 90%. But if you want to power something that usually uses 9 or 12 volts because it has like some uh, um, motorized thing or uh, just, you know, has a regulator and needs a higher voltage, 9 or 12 volts, um, this will do. And it, and it kind of is cute. You just plug in the USB and off you go. And, um, you know, it, 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 it doesn't do any sort of USB calculation. So if you have a bunch of double A's, you can also use this as a booster to give you from about four to six volts up to nine or 12. So you can use it as a normal boost converter if you want, but it's designed basically to be used with stuff with USB ports. Okay. And then there's another one um, that is... It's oh, the same. There's a nine volt yeah. and a 12 volt. So this one is 12 and the other one's nine. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, you can... It's funny, but you, yeah, you can get like 500 to 700 milliamps of nine volt or 12 volt, and it's pretty stable. That's cool. Uh, at 700 milliamps, it droops, but at 500, you get the voltage you expect out of it, and it's it's yeah. fairly, fairly well filtered. Okay, and then um, these are super cute. We have a couple of these. Oh, these are the face plates. Yeah, these are the face plates. So um, we've had our really nice cases for the Raspberry Pi, um, and like this is the clear case, for example, and um, we've had toppers, and now we have toppers specifically for our Pi TFT. So. Um, here, you know, I've got a, a keyboard, but basically you get, you know, that touch screen, the Pi TFT, this is the 2.8 inch version. And then you also have these buttons on the side that you can use as GPIOs. You can sort of see they, they stick out and you can press them uh, and they connect to GPIOs so you can do stuff. But basically you get like a touch screen and um, you have a nice bezel on it and it fits in place and it just plugs right onto our case so you can swap it on or off. So that's kind of nice. Um, and it works with the uh, B plus or Pi 2, and if you have an A plus Pi, you can use the same, uh, a similar topper. We have the version that's for the A plus, and likewise, you have like the five button pads, so you can have buttons. And then um, here, I'll I'll, uh, I'll shut I'll shut down this one. So let me shut down. So you can see, you can also just use the text display. Yeah. Okay, so this is shut down. And then I think boot this one up, but I'll see if this boots. So this one's really cute. It's the 2.4 inch, and it's also a touch display. 
Um, and this is for the A+. Plus. So we have a, like a little mini version if you want to make, oh, upside down. Um, if you want to make the cutest little um, portable text and get buttons at the top. And um, yeah, I don't know, maybe we'll make one for the zero as well. But so far, this is good. And this basically just lets you have a, a nice bezel because people are asking for some sort of a custom case. And so this is our solution. Instead of having a custom case, you just have a custom bezel. Okay. All right, um, and then we can log in. Yeah, keyboard. And we have some nice photos. And mm -hmm. If you wanted to only see, only comes it. in black, and you you pick the color of the bottom. You only get the topper and the little buttons. Um, so we just show it with a clear case. But yeah, just basically get whatever case bottom you like, and yeah. you snap your Pi Two or Pi B Plus. Okay, and we have the other photos from the other one. Okay, so we're turning the corner, almost there at the end of new products. Yep. Doing it's it. time for a board they made. Thank you for showing off all that. Well, we uh, oh, and that case was designed by Mike Dole. Yeah. I just want to give props to Mike Dole, who designed our cases and also designed the topper. This is the um, SHT31 digital humidity sensor. Okay, so you're probably thinking, uh, Lady Anna, you have like eight bazillion humidity and temperature sensors. Why do you have you another do. one? I, you do. It's a problem. I know. It's a little bit of a problem. They're everywhere. Yes. But this is actually, uh, I think, worth the... Um, Breakoutness. So the SHT31Ds from Sensoron, they make like really, really high accuracy, high precision humidity and temperature sensors. This is the most um, accurate humidity and temperature sensor. It has uh, plus or minus 2% relative humidity, 0.3 degrees uh, Celsius temperature. And what's nice about this is we've had a bunch of like Sensoron sensors before, and they're always like this really messed up protocol. It's like not I2C, but you use two wires, but it's like this weird bit bang. It's like, it's just really bizarre. So this is finally a true I2C, compatible with all I2C master protocol, whatever. It doesn't use clock stretching, thankfully. Uh, you just put a delay in. And um, it has multiple uh, uh, precision levels and like repeatabilities and whatever. Uh, the library just basically sets it to the most precise, most repeatable. Can run on a three volt or five volt uh, power and logic. So it's a really nice, extremely small sensor. It's a very good price. And yeah, it's definitely like the most accurate. And it's a good upgrade if you've been using other sensor on sensors like the SHT10 or SHT11 or 15 or 21. Like they've made a ton of these. Uh, I really like the D, Okay. SHT31D. All right, a couple more photos and then we're almost through new products. I have one more after this next one. So this is um, the light panel. Yeah, we actually got these for the photographers and videographers here. Um, we got these small and large panels, but um, we just wanted to carry them in the store in case people wanted them. They basically take a camcorder battery in the back. It's a standard um, Sony camcorder battery. And what I like about these is you can adjust the temperature of the light so it yeah. can be warm or cool. So oh, can you just um, can you just show? Yeah. So this is the cool, cool. Cool white and then warm white, and wow. you can adjust between the two. So there's a, a little knob in the back that you can twist between. That's nice. 3,200 and 5,600 K. And I think my batteries. Oh no, I got my light on. So I can, I can, I don't know if I can show this on the overhead. I'm gonna yeah, show it. But basically, okay, so we've got this and then oh, yeah. yellow and then cool, yellow and then cool, and then you can uh, dim it as well. And it gives a nice, even um, light, extremely bright. But mm. not, I mean, like, I don't want to blind people, but it's extremely bright, but also. Right. Um, I've seen too much anyways. Just, yeah, it's like, there's nothing more to see. Um, and it, it, it fits on top of a camera. And like, we don't usually sell AV stuff, but this is probably very handy for makers who just want like some sort of good quality, even light to photograph projects or video projects. Um, yeah. Pretty much everybody who does videos and photos for the Adafruit group. Uh, wanted one of these, so I was like, okay, let's pick up a bunch, and then I got a couple extra, put them in the store. Yeah, okay. Next up, star of the show besides you this week is the Feather Zero Logger. That's what you. That's what the code was. Yay! Yay so Why this is it. was there the code? This is it. It's the latest. This is the sixth of the Feather main boards. We're going to be doing the Feather Wings um, next. We're going to have some more Feather main boards, but we're going to go to Wings for a little bit. And this is. Um, an M0, Cortex-M0 processor, the uh, same one that's using the Arduino Zero, the ATSAM 21D G18. Um, it's a really nice 32-bit ARM Cortex-M0 processor, M0 Plus processor. Um, we put it on this really nice standard-sized board that's kind of our standard pinout, so it'll work with all the wings and shields and stuff. Um, it has a USB native 
and it shows up like a USB device, and you can do serial, and you can, uh, you know, apparently you can also make it look like a mouse or a keyboard, although I don't know that code that has been ported yet, but apparently eventually it will be. Um, we added USB, char USB and light poly, so you can plug in the light poly battery and it will charge the battery or run off of it. So you can make portable projects very easily. Um, we released a version as a prototyping area, and this version removes that prototyping area and instead gives you a micro SD card. Um, micro SD cards is connected to the pins that are not exposed on the breakout, so you basically get uh, SD card reading or writing, and very handy if you want to do uh, data logging. That's why I call it the data logger. Um, we also do stuff like read like a WAV file off it and play it through the DAC of this chip. Um, what's nice about this is it, it's a very powerful chip. You get a ton of flash, a ton of RAM, so it's, it's actually kind of the first chip where it's like you can really use the SD library and not worry about running out of memory because you get 32K of RAM with this um, chip and the SD card library uses about a K. So you're like totally golden. Like you can use this, not a problem. And um, it's just like a, another feather, another feather in our cap. As it were, yeah. And um, I like this one. I, I kind of like this chipset. Where not not every Arduino library works with it, but most of them do. It's got good solid support and it's fast running at eight, eight, 48 megahertz. Okay. So really good if you want if you want to do some sort of like intense data logging. This is a good good option. All right, and with that, Lady Ada is new products. You did it. Good work. Yeah.